Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. For those of you who are returning, thank you guys so much. And for those of you who are new, my name is Rachel and I make new videos every single week on school psychology. So thank you guys for tuning in. So for today's video, I thought I would share five things that you should know before you go into a school psychology graduate program. These are also helpful too for like if you're already in it, but I think these five things to know are especially helpful. <laughs> Oh my god, I just realized my cat's face is in the video. So I thought these tips would be really helpful, especially if you guys are considering going into a school site grad program. And a couple of these also apply if you're just considering going into like some type of graduate program. And before we get started, I want to show you guys my manicure. I got these done yesterday and I always do gel manicure, but like look at this polish. It was only $5 extra to get this type of polish. She had to use some sort of like metal like it was like a small middle square in order to make these stripes but i think it's so cool it's almost like a weird reflective type nail polish so i just wanted to show you that quick so now let's get started the first thing to know about grad school um this is pretty much for any grad school but it was especially for mine is that classes are a lot longer in undergrad i remember like Sometimes I had classes that were just 50 minutes long, which is very different compared to the length of most grad classes. So when I was in my grad program, um, every single class was two hours and 50 minutes. So pretty much three hour long classes. Um, most teachers would give like one or two breaks. Sometimes I had a couple teachers that would forget to give us breaks, um, but yeah, so the grad school classes, like the length of classes is a lot longer. So I definitely recommend having coffee or some sort of caffeinated beverage on hand. I feel like most undergrad classes are a lot shorter. Like I remember having one class, I think in undergrad, one or two that were like two and a half hours. And I thought it was like the longest thing ever, but at least in grad school, like I will say I enjoyed all the classes I took because that was the field that I wanted to pursue. So I guess it does go by faster, but just be aware that the length of classes is a lot longer. Another thing about like grad school, um, I guess versus undergrad, and this might vary too, depending on like, you know, if you had to take summer classes, but I never had to take summer classes in undergrad. And with my school psych program, that was a requirement. We had to take one semester of grad school classes and it's sped up because it's during the summertime. So I had to take the summer classes as soon as I finished my first year of classes. Um, so in between my first and second year in the program, and I think the classes were like six weeks in length. Like I said earlier, my classes were usually two hours and 50 minutes. And with the summer classes, they were actually a little bit longer. I think they were like three hours and 15 minutes because you're only taking these classes for six weeks. So the course is just sped up. So I remember I had class twice a week in the summer and it was from 3 p.m. to like 10.15. So it was a lot, um, definitely long classes in the summer. And it sucks because like the summer is my favorite month, but I just knew I would have to do it for one semester. I think a lot of grad programs will have you take at least one semester of summer classes just to like fit it all in within a two or three year period. So the third thing that you should know about school site grad programs, and again, this might vary, but I feel like for the majority of programs, your cohort is going to be very small. I remember when I went to the interview for Rick, which is the school I ended up going to, I remember the professor said like, typically we accept anywhere from like seven to 12 students in each class. So, you know, that's really small because in undergrad, I was so used to having at least 30 kids in a class. I mean, sometimes I was in lectures with like 500 kids. So seven to 12 kids in a cohort is like very small, but it's also really nice because then you get so close to the people in your cohort. Like you're with them for years. You're always in the same classes together and you can like rely on each other to study with and like for projects and just for help. With my cohort, there was 10 of us total, which felt very small and cozy. And I really liked just having a small class, like 
Personally, I would just get anxious in larger classes, so to only have 10 kids in my class, it was really nice and I came to know them all really well. I would recommend going to a school that has like a smaller cohort size. Okay, so this is very specific to school psych grad programs. And again, all grad programs look different, but I remember when I was in my first year, we had to learn all these different types of assessments. So we were learning academic, and cognitive assessments um, and with each one we were told from the beginning of the year that we would have to practice these assessments on kids and that was really hard because we were supposed to find our own kids to test and a lot of my classmates had like a lot of younger cousins so they were set um it was really hard for me to find kids that was a challenge for sure like i had two younger cousins so I was able to test them each once, but we had to practice like five tests at least. Um, yeah, I think we had to practice like a total of five tests and I didn't want to retest my cousins. I just felt bad because, you know, it already took a while to test each of them once. So that was such a challenge. Like I had to go to great lengths to try and find kids to test. I had to end up going through my cousin and like her friends to test their kids. So it was really challenging while it was also easy for some kids in my class who already knew a bunch of kids or like had a big family of small kids in it. But that is probably something to expect. Um, again, each program looks different, but they wanted us to actually get that experience testing kids. So definitely something important to know. The fifth thing to know before going into internships specifically, because you'll do your internship the last year of the program, is that you still have to do work during your internship. So even though I had a full-time internship and I didn't have any actual classes, like the only class that we had was an internship class. So every Friday we would only do a half day at our school and then we would go to our internship class at Rick for two hours. So I really enjoyed that because we were able to just like all talk about our experiences and if we had any like questions or needed some support, we would get that. Even though we didn't learn like any new content during internship class, we still had to do what were called artifacts. So we had like, I forget, I think it was like eight or nine artifacts. And these artifacts are just like large projects. So we had to base these artifacts off of our internship. So for example, we had to have like a counseling artifact and we had to write about, you know, our interventions and our counseling sessions, either with like an individual or small group counseling. We had to do like a systems related one where we had to do more like MTSS and data collection. You still have projects to do during your internship year. Um, it's not just like a free year where you're just going into a school. You know, you still have to do those projects in order to prove that you're competent in those areas because there's like 10 areas according to the NAS practice model that we're supposed to be competent in. So that's why we had to do artifacts during internship year. So definitely something to keep in mind. You're still doing assignments, unfortunately, during your last year. So overall, I would say, you know, grad school, especially compared to undergrad, it's definitely more challenging. I mean, there's no way to get around that. It's more challenging, the classes are longer, the content is definitely more of a learning curve, I would say. It's not necessarily like harder, it might take you a little more time to grasp it. So overall, grad school is more challenging in some respects, but it's so rewarding at the end of the day because you're learning about a career that you're gonna be doing for the rest of your life. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video where I talk about five things to expect if you're going into a school site graduate program or if you're currently in one. If you guys have any similar experiences, please leave them down below in the comments. If you guys like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up down below. Subscribe to my channel. I make new videos every single week. And until next time, I will see you guys very soon. Bye. All the time. Looks like you're changing and all. But why didn't you?